We're going to talk about why in the world would somebody become a Jehovah's Witness? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've been getting a lot of comments like that lately, okay? We do. It's all, it's I like, guess we make it sound really terrible. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> like, we got, it's, it's some nice parts of it, but for the most part, it's a cult. So that's what outweighs anything good that came with it. But a lot of people hear these stories, they're like, why would you even be a part of that? <laughs> Right. Well, we're going to give you all the answers today, but before we start, we just want to give a quick shout out. We got our rose shirts on, okay? It says yep. Rose from Concrete. We got this from Solo Creations Merch. It is on Etsy, and it is all original artwork. He has a couple things on there, so we will link that down in the description box. Yup, yup. But uh, let's get into it. So there's a few reasons why people become Jehovah's Witnesses. It's not like... Everybody knows off the rip that this is a cult because they don't present it to you, you no. know, honestly. Like, even when they come to the door, we didn't say this before, but this might be somebody's first time watching this. Yeah. When you go to the door as a Jehovah's Witness, you have an agenda to get this person to become a Jehovah's Witness, but you are taught how to do it. So if you are straightforward and tell somebody, hey, we looking for people to join our, our religion and be Jehovah's Witnesses, it might scare them off because that sounds like too much of a commitment. Or they might not be interested. So what you do is, hey, we're just talking to your neighbors. We're just sharing Bible knowledge. Like you water it down. Yeah. We're just sharing Bible knowledge. We're just talking to your neighbors. Sharing or, some encouragement, some positive things from the scriptures. That's it. And you keep it that simple. And, and the whole plan is leave them with some type of publication. And in your mind, it's just like, all right, these church people knocking on my door. They gave me something to read. Mm -hmm. And they'll ask you. Can we come back next week and see what you thought about it? And That's how you rail it in. Okay? Yep. That's how you're like, you bring it in. Yeah, that if, way. If you if they say yes to that, that's like, ooh, we got turn visit. Yep. You don't know that you are something called a return visit now. Mm -hmm. So they reel you back in. They come back next week. And now they try to start a Bible study with you over time. A so-called Bible study. But it's really a book on how to become a Jehovah's Witness, but it's not called that. Yeah. And they keep trying, and then they eventually invite you to the Kingdom Hall. I'll come to the hall, and everybody is taught to be extra nice yes. because that's not normal. They want to love bomb you. And we got a video, 10 Signs of a Cult, that kind of breaks down all of that. Yes. But basically, it's to reel you in slowly and then convince you the only way to be acceptable by God is to be baptized. Your baptism don't count no matter what religion you came from. So right. we got to baptize you. And now you locked in. And this is when they get critical and you learn the things you didn't learn in your Bible study, but now it's too late. So that's yeah. the whole plan. We also have another video um, that's about how to brainwash uh, members or like how they brainwash you into really like becoming one and being in it and yeah. getting brainwashed. But the reason why people would also want to be one is because you have these, if you're spiritually or religiously inclined and you're at a point where you want to learn more about the bible these people seem like they know a lot about the bible right. so that is one of the main re like if you're coming in organically and when i say organically is i mean you have nobody else that's in the organization around you yeah. that's one of the main things that can be attractive about the religion is that you think that they have a great deal of bible knowledge and on top of it, they have all of these other publications um, that make things easier or make these topics easier to digest. Because if let's be let's be for real, okay? Yeah. If you are a studier of theology and you're just reading the Bible plain and simple, it can be hard to comprehend. Okay, yeah. so they have all these extra things um, to help make it easier for you to comprehend, which. Within that, you don't realize it at the time, but within that, they change small things that ends up changing the Bible and changing what it's actually talking about. Yeah. So they have the study Bible or whatever, and it's basically changed the Bible and made different words easier. So you, it's not talking like the, thou in their New World Translation. Right. It's just talking normal English in there. And that's what you are taught as a Jehovah's Witness when people ask, why y'all got your own Bible? Oh, because this is modern English and yeah. you think that you're just making it easier. 
And in these publications, like you say, oh, this just explains such and such better. But what it really is, taking changing meanings. Yep, take, changing meanings. And you take Jehovah's Witnesses' ideas, you put it in this publication, yeah. and then you act like you add the Bible to it. You throw a couple of scriptures in this publication, so yeah. now it comes off as okay, the Bible really means this, but in right. reality, this is just Jehovah's way or Jehovah's Witnesses way of indoctrinating you into right. their belief. So this right. is what happens like you brought up. Mm -hmm. Some people are just looking for, you know, some type of spiritual journey in life mm -hmm. and they come across Jehovah's Witnesses and like even most people that go to church, they, you say go to Ephesians, they don't know off the top of their head where, where, to, go. where to go. So Jehovah's Witnesses seem like they know more because off the top, they are, oh, this book is here. This is here. This Which is something you're taught. You're taught that from like whenever you're a study yeah. where the books of the Bible are. And it was like a weekly thing for us. I had to learn like five books. When I was studying, I had to learn five books of the Bible every week in yeah. the placement of it. And then we would go over it in our study yeah. uh, with the added five weeks from the back. And you do that until you reach the end of the Bible. So yeah. you end up knowing all of the Bible books in order. Right. And also, unlike most churches, Jehovah's Witnesses have to participate in so-called preaching from the platform. So usually you got a pastor, your reverend, mm -hmm. but people are, you might give a testimony, but you're not giving an assignment. Next Thursday, you have to stand up and read the book of Psalms from this to this, or mm -hmm. we are going to do a study and everybody got to raise their hand and answer questions to this Bible stuff. Yeah. So it comes off, like you said, like Jehovah's Witnesses no more. So this yes. is something that impresses people. Right. Because it's a very involved and interactive religion. So it's never just a pastor talk. Well, it is sometimes like mm -hmm. somebody just talking from the stage, but yeah. also the other parts of the meeting is like you're involved in it. So you are answering questions or you're going up there and participating in different parts and talks as well. You got to. Yes. Yeah. And even for kids, I think that's something that can be pretty appealing to the average person mm -hmm. is the Caleb and Sophia videos that they recently came out with yeah. um, a couple years ago. Those are very appealing because it, it basically... A lot of the Caleb and Sophia videos are just um, videos on how to teach kids to be like well disciplined. Okay, listen yeah. to your parents. Don't lie. Don't steal. Like it's things like that, but it's in these little cartoon videos. So that is something else that is really appealing. Like if I take myself as a person without any past connected to the Jehovah's Witness organization, those are things that I would find appealing. The yeah. fact that they have their own app that's appealing. The fact yep. that they have publications that easier explain things, that's appealing. Even yeah. the My Book of Bible Stories, like that was something appealing back then too, is that they right. had this whole book with pictures in it to describe the different accounts that happened in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> it's not until you leave that you look back and you're like, this is indoctrination because they do like... Yeah, for kids. Yeah. You think, uh, even at some of the churches, at least the kids can go somewhere and play. Yeah. But here, the kids are forced to pay attention and sit here. Can't play with no toys. They no. got to be alert. They even make the kids participate in comments. Say this. And they raise yes. their hand and say it. So this is impressive to Little people. by little age. Yep. And like the kids are just doing it because their parents are telling them to do it. Uh, I think most kids go through that like... Okay, to keep them engaged, you have to write down how many times you hear oh, Jesus yeah. or Jehovah. Like, they would yep. write Jesus and Jehovah at the top of the page, split it down the mil middle, and then you keep a tally of how many times you hear. I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the kids are indoctrinated. Even in service, they make the kid knock on the door and say something. So, you know, this is just a way to catch yes. people. Yes, because yep. who is going to turn away a kid? Like, who is going to look at a kid that comes to your door and says something nice about the Bible or reads a scripture. Yeah. But you got to be kind of kind of cold to do yeah. that. Like <laughs> I, I remember one time it was a, uh everybody applauded this but it's laughable now at the assembly. This kid. Now, it probably wasn't even a real story because they lie so much with these fictional situations yes. that happen. But he said the little kid knocked on the door and the man said, "Little man, you're brainwashed." And the kid said, "But I'm brainwashed clean." And everybody oh, no, no, it, no. That is not little man, little man, you are brainwashed, and you went for a rude I'm awakening. I'm brainwashed clean. Yeah. That is sad, ain't it? So ain't no telling if that was a real story. That was probably just 
You know they have ways of trying to indoctrinate people with these fake stories. Watchtower's always coming out with some fake story, and also yeah. I believe that half their stories that are in the like young people ask book and stuff, like all these inserts they have of teens, like so and so said this, <laughs> da 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 da, and it's yeah. something real whack. It's like um, I think you guys made that up too. Even like in the back of the uh, awakes, yeah. a marine biologist said that Jehovah ain't nobody said that. <laughs> Somebody that intelligent. It's not about to become no Jehovah's Witness. They already went to college and understand most of this stuff is bogus. Oh my gosh. I swear, I have an experience like that because I have a... Whenever I first started working in the hospital, I was a tech, like a CNA at the time. Mm -hmm. And there was this doctor. I will never forget him. His name was Dr. Boggs. Mm -hmm. And him and I got into like a religious debate one night. And I t he was like, what religion are you? And I was like, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. And he was like, oh, sweetheart, you are... There's the woods, and you are way out in the woods. <laughs> and I remember sharing this experience as, like, a comment at the Kingdom Hall. Uh -huh. I, and looking, like, once I woke up, I looked back, and I just want to, I want to see Dr. Boggs one more time, just to tell him, like, you are so right. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you know, and I want to tell him the whole experience, like, how I made a comment about him at the Kingdom mm -hmm. Hall. I want to tell him all of it. Yeah, that's <laughs> something like how me and K-Bone, shout out to my homie K-Bone, my older homie from my old job, but he used to try to put me on game about religion. And that's where, that was the origin of, like, me waking up yeah. way before I woke up because he started teaching me his stuff about our culture and history yeah. and religion. He was like, oh, but religion is all pretty much like a cult. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, no, it's not a cult. And he was like, you'll get it one day. Like, he was so, so calm he was about so cool it. about it. And now yes. I thought, like, but even us having a difference of religion, that was like my right-hand man. I would talk to him yes. every day. Yes. And when I woke up and I went to visit in Ohio and we shot pool, I was like, you know I don't mess the religious stuff no more. He was like, I told you. He was like, see? He was like, I knew you would catch on eventually. And he yeah. He just he broke down a lot of stuff just with life and yes. law of attraction. But it's always nice when you think of the people that you it is. that you know tried to put you on game before you was ready for it. And it's crazy because Dr. Boggs was like that too. Like even though I used him as a comment. He was very gentle with me. Like he right. he didn't try to force me to believe a certain way. He just said that I was lost and I was yeah. just like, yeah, whatever. No, I'm not. I have the truth, you know, whatever. Yeah. But then I remember he told me about this book and it was like a spiritual awakening book. Yeah. And I still can't remember what it's called. Maybe somebody in the comments will know what it's called, but it was about an eagle. Mm -hmm. I remember it being about an eagle. And I want to read that book so bad, but I forget what it was called. Somebody in the comments is going to know. Yeah, somebody. Yeah. Oh my gosh, please. One of you guys know what this book is. For real. It was about an eagle. It's a spiritual book. But anyway, yeah, he was just so calm with it. And every time that I would go to work, even after that, he would always talk to me. Yeah. And he was like in his probably 50s or 60s at the time. Right. So I feel like he looked at me as like a... A daughter, and he probably felt really bad that I was yep. even in this religion to begin with. For real, because that's how we look at even the people in the comments or just people that's in the organization. We are not making videos for you necessarily that's not looking for real answers. Yeah. Because when you come across these type of people, it's not like, no, it's wrong. And it's just like, it's cool. You get it one day. Yes. Because we understand we were lost at some point and we understand it it's not meant for everybody to get it some people at one time no yeah some people lose their life being a part of this organization because your journey of life it wasn't meant for you to get it at that point it just yeah. it wasn't meant for you and then other people we wonder how come i didn't know this back then well it wasn't your time your time everything yeah. happens at the correct time yes yeah. and even even us looking back like i say this all the time but i'm not regretful of the time that i was in there um mm -hmm. I do have regrets of getting baptized, you know, but I'm not regretful of like growing up the way that I did because I feel like if I didn't grow up the way that I did, I wouldn't be who I am now, Right. you know? So it's, it was almost necessary because what if I didn't grow up as a Jehovah's Witness and then later on I'm trying to go through my own spiritual journal journey and I become a Jehovah's Witness, you right. know, like you never know what'll happen. Yeah. So. And that's how we met through this cult. Like yes, it's exactly. certain things that, and now we are open thinkers because it's like, if something that was always told is truth end up not being truth, I should question everything in life. Yes. And going through an experience like this with your partner is so, I don't know. It's like, it can be torment or you, it can, it can be torment. Yeah. It, that's exactly what I wanted yep. to say. It can make or break you. And then 
when we got on the outside of this and made it through, it's like, it almost feels like you can come out of anything. Right. You know, like you literally can come out of anything. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned, you know, going through this thing with a partner and that takes us to our next point on why people become Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. Most people become Jehovah's Witnesses due to family. Mm -hmm. You think? Yes, definitely. And possibly your partner or spouse as well, you know, because... Yep. Um, a lot of witnesses end up falling in love with like worldly people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when they fall in love with worldly people, eventually they will get talked to from the brothers. Like once that relationship becomes serious or they're progressing, like in mm -hmm. the organization, a lot of pressure starts coming on them about uh, either them getting baptized and finding somebody else, or if they're already baptized, finding somebody else. A lot of times people will lie and say, oh, well, my spouse is studying. Yeah. And they're not even actually studying. They might not want to have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people will come in that way because it's kind of forced upon them yeah. from their, through their spouse. Yeah, because you have certain situations. It could be somebody, two people that are married mm -hmm. that are not Jehovah's Witnesses and one starts to study yes, and become it. one. So now... It happens to where, like, my grandparents. My grandparents were already married mm -hmm. back in the, in the 70s. My granddad started studying. My grandma was not with it. Oh, your granddad was first. Yeah, my granddad was first. Wow. And then my grandma was against She was not feeling that stuff. She hated it. <laughs> and over time, seeing being persuaded by these nice people, she became a Jehovah's Witness. So it could yeah. work like that. It could be to where, like you said, it could be that situation. It could be, you know, two people that are together mm -hmm. or it could be one person that's already a jehovah's witness yeah. that's been one and they've been married forever and yep. they might just have a spouse that, that never joins you just never know it could be you know mm -hmm. uh friends you and your close friend that you go way back with they become a jehovah's witness and yep. you become one or they already are jehovah's witness and then they're just studying with you like slowly you mm -hmm. know and you go through something traumatic in your life because this this is the thing about they find their entry points, okay? Yep. So you go through something traumatic in your life and they ask you like, how do you stay so connected and always have such a positive attitude? So Boom. now you it's get brought opener. in that way. Yeah. Yep, it could work like that. Most times it happens with your parents, just like any other religion. Like yes. if you have your parents that are Jehovah's Witnesses, chances are the kids are forced to be you're born into yeah, it. Yeah, you don't have a choice growing up. Yeah. You get in trouble or eventually get kicked out the house. Yes, and that's one of the most prevalent ways that people become Jehovah's Witnesses. And it's probably one of the worst ways. Yeah. Because that's, that's whenever you're fully like indoctrinated and immersed in that religion. And your whole mm -hmm. family and support system is as well. So that's whenever it's really hard to get out. Because we, you're not in by choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's something you don't want to be... Like like we explained, a lot of these other scenarios are somewhat by choice. Even though it's trickery, you were tricked into doing it. Yeah. But when you are a kid, you don't have a choice. You yes. are your family will literally turn against you or force you to be to feel like an outsider as a child. Yeah. You go into the meeting, you go in out in field service. You got to. And yes. that's what happens with a lot of these people. Not and they always say in the comments. Most people that are born in it leave. Yeah. Most people that stay are the ones that came along a little later. Yep. And a lot of people, like, you, you are forced in multiple ways as a child. Like, oh, I'm not going to get you this toy if you don't behave yourself at the meeting. Yep. Right? You're constantly being, like, bribed with different things. Yeah, like, you do. I'm not going to buy you a car unless you uh, pioneer, pioneer after yeah. high school. Like, it's it's stuff like that. Yep. Like, Even um, back when people will go... Uh, roller skating like in Ohio that's a big thing going skating mm -hmm. if you didn't go on field service you couldn't go skating yes. stuff like that oh my gosh if you didn't go to the meeting and people saw you out later in the day or like that was a thing like yeah, if you didn't trouble. yes you would get in trouble if you didn't go to the meeting but now you're out and about like in the evening you're yep, in trouble yeah. for real I remember um shout out to I don't know if Brandon watched our videos but he never got baptized. He's a uh, he from back in Dayton. Mm -hmm. He would go to the meeting sometime when he he ordered to me. But eventually, once he got grown, he stopped going. Mm -hmm. But he might pop into a memorial or something. But he can skate. His whole the Vance family back in Dayton, they all can skate good. Yeah. He came to a skate party and people had a problem. Oh, he ain't, he don't even go to the hall. We ain't see him in a month of Sundays while he's skating. And he was kind of 
his feelings was kind of hurt. Like, dang, yes. like, I grew up with y'all. Like, I yes. still got love for y'all. I can't come skate. Right. Yeah, but that's the but culture. But that's the culture. Yeah. yeah. If you're not... If you're not on the inside, then you're on the outside. That's kind of simple. Thing. Mm -hmm. I think one of the last and most manipulative ways that people become witnesses is because the organization really preys on um, not the weak, but like the weaker or vulnerable. People. Yeah, that's a good word. Yeah. The vulnerable, vulnerable people. people. Yes, not weak, but vulnerable. Yeah. So like single moms. Heavy. Single moms is like one of the major people that they prey on because they don't have that man in their life. Mm -hmm. And they're so over, their plates are full. They have these kids that they're raising by themselves. Likely they have to work, you know? Yeah. So that already in itself is overboard, you know? Yeah. So now you have these nice people that are coming to your door and like wanting to study with you through the week and they're hold, they're holding and helping with your kids bringing them clothes if yes, they need it. and asking you like what you need you're it's like you're gaining some kind of support system yep. so why would you ever want to give that away and why would you not want to be part of something like that yeah. where before you were one and now you've gained this entire community Yep, it just comes with a cost. As long as you do what we want, yeah, we got your back. Yes, and some people are absolutely willing to make that trade yep. because life beforehand to them was so it's so much easier to just follow whatever it is that they're saying. Yeah, you, you know, you take these people's lead, especially if you don't have a, a male role model around, and you got mm -hmm. these elders that are coming to be supportive and teach so-called yes. teach your kids yes. how to become young adults yes. even though they're teaching them a bunch of bogus stuff but <laughs> this stuff is something that catches on so you cover it. single moms another is uh poor people yes poor people the poverty neighborhoods always get hit with you know religion because you are in this state of mind you got stress that a lot of people don't have because it's like I don't even know how I'm, I'm going to pay this rent. Yeah, you're operating in survival yeah. mode. Yep, so any survival. kind any kind of positive, positive thought that's brought to you fills you up in a different way, you yep. know, because you're not, it's it's like taking a break from the real world, especially if they're giving you all of these empty promises yep. of such a better life. Like they're literally feeding you a dream, you know, yep. um, they're like, oh, well, you're not going to have to worry about these hard times soon enough, you know? Crime. Yes. Crime all is going to be gone. You yes. don't have to worry. Yep. All of that. They hit all those points. And, oh, Jehovah's going to wipe out every tear from your eye. And, you know, it just sounds, it sounds so good. And so that's an easy way to reel people in. And yep. I think another thing that they use is, like, taking people's really vulnerable moments like when somebody passes or something. Yup, that's, that's a big one. Yes. If somebody yeah. in your family passes away, um, they come swooping in. Like they come swooping in trying to pray with you and your family. I noticed it just even just from whenever my dad had passed away, mm -hmm. all of a sudden all these witnesses come out the woodworks saying how sorry they are for us and stuff and wanting to come visit and pray. This is the way this is the opening to get you back into the cult yes it, it is it is and i recognized it immediately and i'm that's one of the moments where i feel like i felt kind of bitter yeah where i was just like you guys haven't talked to us in years please don't start now and it's not a bitter it's just keeping it real yeah you don't rock with me like that so don't pretend yeah don't pretend yeah that's because, all it is yes yeah, no yep so you got we cover <laughs> single mothers poor people people that uh lose loved ones mm -hmm. sick people that's another one because it's the illusion of this new world. Because you ain't never heard about no yeah. paradise world. You heard you die, you go to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what most people here growing up. This yeah. being heaven is going to be here and you're going to be playing with llamas and gorillas. And, and lions. And lions. And you're going to be wake up healthy every day and mm -hmm. be eating, eating apples and nectarines. Like this is a, <laughs> a dream you're selling people and it's like. Yep, What's and you're gonna catch? get rid of that wheelchair, like yeah. if you people in wheelchairs, and the, you'll get rid of that. Yeah, your dead one's gonna be here on earth. Y'all gonna be high five, and then people yes. fall for this. Yes. So that's this. especially people with chronic illnesses. Yep. Oh my gosh, you remember that broadcast where it was that? Um, it was like a person in an iron lung, I think. Was it the lady with? Uh, no, that one. That was something else. I'm thinking the lady the with lady, the arms and legs. Yeah, she was yeah. just like the body and. Yep. She had to get around like on 
a bed with wheels and yeah, stuff. Yeah, put me but, down. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, I can't deal with that. That's. I think about that too. Yeah, that's hard. Oh my gosh, so, that's rough. But it, it showcases people like this because that's also the type of people that they prey on. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, there's going to be a paradise earth where you'll have your arms and legs back and mm-hmm. you'll be able to walk and you'll be able to run and swim and do all the things that you haven't been able to do in this lifetime. Yep. You know, it's just... Just stay it's, down. Uh, we we yeah. can compare... Jehovah's Witnesses to the pimp gang. Mm-hmm. Just stay down like a pimp telling this woman on the corner, hey, baby, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to give you the word. I just need you to stay down, stay on this corner, work for me, baby. Everything going to be all right. <laughs> I, I, I promise I'm going to give you the world. And the woman the goes, truth. the woman goes, okay. And next thing you know, 10 years go by and you still on this corner. Yeah. Doing that. You, hey, ain't got, you ain't got no diamonds, no pearls, no meat coach. You ain't got nothing. And that's this organization. Just stay down and we're going to look out for you. Have faith. Down Have there. faith. I promise. Eventually, it's going to be here. Jehovah's going to take care of you. Like, it's that. And everybody grows old and dies waiting on this empty promise to happen. It's, mm-hmm. it's the job. You get hired at this job that don't pay you, but they're going to pay you eventually. And you keep showing up to work. Yep. Every day. It ain't got no paycheck. Yeah. That's this organization. They But doesn't it feel good to work hard? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, it does. Because you tell me to say, yeah, I, yeah. I love... This hard work with no, I, love it. I get nothing I, out of it. I'm tired, but it's a spiritual exhaustion. <laughs> like what are you talking about? You don't even know what spiritual exhaustion is. This person yes. told you what that meant. Right. Yep. That part. Speaking of empty promises, that's actually going to be one of our next videos. Yeah. So how like the organization and its empty promises affects people's lives. Oh, that's a good mm-hmm. one. So it'll be three parts. This is the first part. Why people even join this? Then, like you said, the empty promises yes. part two, and then the final part is the trauma of getting up out of this whole situation. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. make sure to keep your eye out. Turn your post notifications on. Yeah, do okay? that. Spread the word too. Yes. Uh, follow our new Instagram page, Awaken Truths IG, yep. and don't forget to. I'll let you say it this time. All we right. never do that. All right. They got a like. You got a comment, and lastly, you got to subscribe. And share it too. <laughs> and we'll catch y'all on the next ones. Peace. <laughs>